Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the 5% Club with David Pataki and Maria Mejia. <laughs> like, no, I'm Maria and I am here on this podcast. Oh my goodness, David. Living in Canada, snow day after snow day, I'm telling you. So today, we get a pretty bad, so we were kind of expecting the storm yesterday, but then it kind of decided to do it overnight and today, so... It's a snow day for us here in Ontario. Well, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, as we were talking the last uh, episode or two that, uh, you know, we've had a pretty, uh, pretty quiet, pretty calm winter this year, which is very unlike uh, the part of the world that we're at. Uh, like we've had pretty much uh, visible grass for most of January. But uh, yes, today we got dumped on. We probably got a boat. Um, I can look out the window right now. It looks like we got a boat. 12 inches or 30 centimeters uh, for uh, for the bilingual uh, measurement people out there. Oh, yeah. Now I got to bust out my uh, the snow blower again. Second time mm. this year. So I'm excited. I love using the snow blower. It's my favorite. And then I let everyone else use the shovel. I'm like, oh. I'm the snow blower. I work the heavy machinery. The rest of you guys can do the manual labor. <laughs> Nice. <clears throat> yes. Well, the snowblower is at the is at the end of my hands here, or the end of my arms. It's these hands that hold the shovel, and uh, I don't probably don't go as quick as the snowblower, but uh, it's pretty effective. Yeah, that's nice. Well, it's it's also nice that you know we live in a relatively you know populated area, so we have a small driveway, a two car driveway, so it doesn't take too long. Thank goodness. Unlike those people who live further out in the country. Um, I have like ridiculously long driveways. I wouldn't even, I'd be like, no, you're not seeing me until the snow melts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun stuff. Anyways, let's just jump right in. Uh, if you remember for this season, we are inviting everyone to um, do the challenges after each episode. So this is your accountability time now. Well, uh, hold on a second. Let, let, let's, we're calling it homework. Don't say homework. the challenges. I, I want to get right down to the nitty gritty right now. Uh, you know, new season, uh, slightly different uh, atmosphere on the podcast. So yes, we're going to go with homework. Sorry, yes. Maria, I cut you off. Go ahead. All right, back, back to, to university days, college days, high school days, you know, all those days where you had homework and assignments. Um, so last episode's homework was going through your bank statements. So your credit card, your checking account, your savings account, anything that you use for business purchases or business purposes whatsoever. So, you know, figuring out what are your fixed expense? You know, how much do you pay in rent? How much do you pay with your monthly leases? Things like that. Um, and figuring out also how much are you paying your vendors for different supplies that you purchase, for the products that you need to purchase and sell, and figuring out, okay, let's start making a game plan on what we can do to help decrease those expenses. Um, so definitely, if, if you forgot to do that, that's okay. You can always go back to uh, the previous episode, listen to it again, absorb even more, and you know, build a successful business starting from there actually well if you haven't done it yet i would suggest that you pause the uh you know unless you're driving i don't want you to pause it and, and do it while you're driving but uh you know take the take this time to to review it because you know uh you know we're, we're trying to help everyone get into uh the five percent club uh that's just you know it's pretty easy to do if you follow uh, some simple rules one of them of course is uh, writing stuff down but all the other little things little tips tricks and hacks that we're going to be given to you over uh the course of this season uh and just keep in mind that every cent every dollar that you save on your expenses goes straight to your bottom line straight to your profit straight back into your pocket as they say all right, Marie, what's on tap for today? <clears throat> so for today, we kind of want to go over, um, you know, what is your market dominating position? So this isn't a common term in like when you first start out in business as you're an entrepreneur, you know, it's kind of a, for me uh, personally, when I first started my first business, I had never heard of market dominating position. It was a completely new term to me. So David, 
being the amazing panastic business coach that you are, could you give us a quick definition of what a market dominating position is? Uh, certainly. Well, <clears throat> some of you who, uh, who have been in business for a little bit or, you know, have been talking to some people, you might have heard of uh, unite unique selling proposition. Uh, that is that is the, the minimum that you should be looking at when you are, are starting a business or when you're trying to market your business, as in what makes you different than everybody else. But I want to take that one step further. We use the term market dominating position. So you've got your USP, and then which is kind of your, you know, what makes you a little bit uh, unique from everybody else. But I'm going to suggest that we find out what makes you 10 times better than your uh, competition so that you're actually dominating your market. The, the people want to work with you and only you because what you do is that much, that much different or that much better than what everyone else does. Now, this is a very tricky, not, not tricky, I shouldn't say that. It is something that involves quite a bit of work. So what you need to do is figure out what you can do differently not just differently than everybody else, but what, what would make it hard for people to either copy or maybe impossible to copy, especially if you're in the, into some kind of technology when you can um, create some software or just an interface that no one else has out there that is your proprietary um, uh, software or just proprietary uh, content. That will alone will make it uh, difficult or impossible for your competition to uh, to copy because it is your content. You know, some people have apps out there that they can create to help their business move forward. But again, it's not always just about the uh, technology. I was using that as an example because it's easy for us to relate to. But in a different way uh, to innovate your business could be just uh, the the combination of products that you put together or maybe you're able to private label some product or perhaps it's the way you deliver the product or um, just those types of things so you have to do a deep dive first into what is your market you know i'm sure most people out there have thought about this at one time or another you know the thing they have to consider too is that their market isn't everybody I know people go, oh yeah, you know, everyone can use my market or everyone can use my product or my service. But the problem is that's not, really, yeah, potentially, yes, that could be the case, but you can't market to everybody at the same time. So you have to think about who is your target market specifically, and then you can find out what their issues are, what their problems are, what their number one concern problem that they want you to fix or help them uh, alleviate. And then that's what you start focusing on for the market dominating position so that you can create your your tagline or your the message that you give them that speaks directly to the problem and the solution that you provide that can help them solve that problem. So in a nutshell, I hope that explains what market dominating position is. We don't want to stay with it, just what makes you different. We want to help set you apart from your competition so that you're literally dominating your market. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Because, you know, what makes you different can be, you know, something really simple like, oh, my prices are very, very cheap or, oh, I'm super friendly or, oh, I just use technology. Well, you know, you might do that, but there might be, you know, Joe Blow in the next town over that does that exact same thing. Well, now you both stand out as it were, but in different towns. Well, now you got to make yourself even more different than Joe Blow in the next town over because you want to be able to, um, depending on what industry or what type that you business it is, you know, you want to stand out even more than those people who already are trying to stand out, you know? Um, and kind of to add to your, you know, you're not marketing to everyone else. Um, when I first started my business, I kind of, I was like, a, oh, I'm, I'm doing taxes. I'm going to help everybody that I can. Um, but that's that's not the case. Not everyone needs your specific type or your specific, you know, personality, you know, don't exactly drive sometimes. So you got to narrow it down, like who exactly, um, you know, we've heard that term, you know, who's your avatar, who, you know, make a rough draft of who's the ideal person that you want to work with, then start creating a dominating position around them. So, so if you were to meet 
um, your ideal client, Susan and her family, you'd be able to sell to them very easily because as individual as we are, the needs that you fulfill are very specific. So you had to try and figure out um, what that is. So you know, nail it down that way. If somebody comes, uh, a potential customer or a potential vendor, um, that you'll be able to, you know, really explain and detail out and really stand out. Have them be like, "Oh, wow, this person's amazing, and I want to work with them." All right. One of the things, too, uh, very good point there, Maria. But uh, a good litmus test for your market dominating position, it could be or should be, can anyone else say this? You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the, the <clears throat> business owners that I've talked to in the past, you know, I go, so what makes you different? And, you know, and almost immediately they go to, uh, we've got the best service or we've got the most knowledgeable staff or we've got the friendly staff or the best prices. Now, the problem with that is anybody can say that, whether they're backing, whether it's true or not. So because it's hard to prove whether or not that your 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 uh, staff is happier or or, or uh, better or smarter than, than than staff down the street so if you can look at uh the messaging that you're putting out there and you can put anybody else's name out there like abc has the most friendly staff or uh, cde has the most friendly staff then you go well then that's not a market dominating position it has to be unique to you, but also, again, very difficult for someone else to say and provable. And usually you want, if you can put some sort of guarantee involved in that, then that makes it even uh, more ironclad, uh, more of a, an effective uh, market dominating position. Uh, like one, one of the uh, one of the storage uh, places around um, around the, the GTA, the greater Toronto area here, um, it's, uh, you know, you know, today's society, you know, we actually, uh, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, we've got the, uh, the global, uh, pandemic of, of COVID over the last couple of years. And even though we're getting to the tail end of it, um, you know, one of the, uh, uh, at least, uh, national and international or like North American pandemics is the fact that we have stuff, we have so much stuff. And what that is, has done is it's, it's, it's created a whole new market for storage units. People are making, uh, you know, boatloads of uh, cash just because they've got a building with a room on it that locks. So people take all the stuff that they have because they can't get rid of it or they can't physically, mentally get rid of it. So they put it into a room, lock it in there and it stays in there and they pay for it month after month after month. But because of that, now there's a new market out there, you know, with the with the storage units. Well, there's this one storage unit that decided that, you know, among the competition out there, how can we stand above? So their market dominating position is that they offer a free truck with free movers. So because they know once they get your stuff from your place into their place and lock that door, that that's going to be recurring income over and over and over again, month over month over month. I don't know what the average is of, of people um, having storage units, but I know it's well uh, over uh, the time that they will earn the money back for the free truck and the movers to the point where they're going to make profit moving forward. And the fact is they could even charge you more. If one plate, one unit is costing $200 a month, you could charge $225 a month because guess what? You don't have to rent the truck. You don't have to find any friends or any movers to move the stuff. All you need to do is pay that extra 20, 25 bucks a month because the stuff got away from you. It's, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you feel better, but now you've got a new payment that you should be, uh, you know, if we look at the last episode about your, your um, reoccurring costs, you know, that's something that you should consider. If, if you've got something in a storage unit that you don't really need, you're not using, either sell it, give it away, or throw it out or do something with it, recycle it, upcycle it, but that's something that you really need to consider. For sure. So, you know, like, like David said, take your, you know, your idea of what your market dominant position is and put your competition's name in it. Are they doing those things right now? Could they potentially do it tomorrow if you started advertising your, your dominating position? 
to make it very unique and somewhat hard for someone else to duplicate it. Um, so for example, with us, with me and David here at the 5% Club, um, I'm an accountant. You know, I do bookkeeping, taxes, all that fun stuff. David's a business coach. You know, he helps mentor business owners to create that successful business. Well, we've merged the two. So I help them on the back end, keep organized, stay organized, file everything on time. And he analyzes and creates strategies with the business owners to help them create that successful business that they originally started their business for. And so that's very unique for an accountant and a business coach to be in business together the, the way we are. And so that's going to be very difficult for, say, the accountant in the next town over to do to do both accounting and business coaching because normally a business owner can only do so many things with their time. So figure out, you know, what will make you very, very different than someone else. And something right. else. <clears throat> oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Maria. Something else um, is uh, we kind of been hinting on it is making it part of your marketing. Once you figured out what it is, you know, start advertising it out to everyone, whether that be posting it on Facebook, taking out some Google ads or maybe even some printed ads, you know, just start spreading the word and make yourself let everyone know that you're standing out and things like that. Yeah, for sure. And then this is something uh, just uh, so everyone knows out there that this doesn't isn't something that takes five minutes. This isn't something that happens overnight. It, it takes time. Uh, it takes a, a, quite a bit of effort to sit down and, and figure this out. But it does start with who is your major target market. And that will help you be able to funnel down uh, to what message or what problem that you are solving for them and then how you actually solve it for them. You know, and, and that, that actually ha helps you stay very focused on how you're going to, to move forward with your business. And you know, we talked about in, in the last you know, last two episodes, we talked about, you know, where you are now and where you want to go. And then we talked about, well, let's what costs can we cut to make sure that we're going in the right direction? So this is, you know, building on that. And now once you've got this sort of uh, market dominating position figure out, figured out, you can now look at all everything that you're doing moving forward and you can use this as your guiding light if you will does is what i'm doing next align with the market dominating position all right like you don't want to go down a path um that <laughs> one of our uh, favorite sayings uh, is of course if you don't know where you're going any road will get you there then it rings very true in this situation as well. If you don't know what it, what problem it is that you're solving, then for for your customer, th then you just start offering a whole bunch of different things, and you're and you get to the spaghetti throwing against the wall, and let's see what sticks. Or someone uses, you know, some people use the shotgun approach example. Um, let's just take a you know a wide shot, and you know eventually it'll hit somebody. But what I'm going to challenge everyone here to do is to to sit down and. Figure figure out what specifically can I do that will help me dominate my market. So that means let's figure out who my target market is, 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 is as um, finite as possible and find out the major problem that they have and make sure that your solution that you're offering will, will solve that problem and solve it better than everybody else in your market. See that that's the key. Is only if you're focused on what it is that you're doing, you can figure out what how you can what you could package together to be uh, dominating your market. Like as Maria was saying about but for uh, for what we're doing with the bookkeeping and the accounting and the, and the business coaching. See business businesses. There are there are really two sides of businesses, but the key indicator is the numbers. The numbers don't lie. You need to keep track of your numbers. You need to know how to look at your numbers in percentages. And you also need to know how to move forward, you know, with the market dominating position. You know, what is it that you're that you're doing? So it was the, it was a natural, or at least in my mind, in Maria's mind, it was the natural evolution for us to take the business from just a bookkeeping business and separately a coaching business that put them together so now all our packages include services that the 
other one like maria uh, helps with me with um, with the customers that are that are strictly on the business coaching side we're able to dig deeper into their profit and loss statement so they can make more intelligent decisions as moving forward <clears throat> and on the bookkeeping side of things we're able to look at the you know the, we're looking at the numbers but when we do also offer um the coaching side in every one of our packages so that you know there is not one bookkeeper that i'm aware of out there that offers included in every one of their bookkeeping packages um coaching to one to one level or another <clears throat> make yourself stand out um and let everyone know pretty much <laughs> mm -hmm. so right. what and what, what i was gonna say just i mean it has to be it does take time uh, and it's something that, that could develop over uh, a few weeks, a few months, even six months to a year. Because what you want to do is you want to keep working on it and refining it so that at, one, at some point, it's just bang on, laser sharp, so that it works every time that you speak to your prospect. Yeah, 100%. Like, it takes time to come <clears throat> up with the, the original market dominating position, but also be willing to let it change, let it adapt. Um, as we've seen with the pandemic, you know, some businesses were strictly in person, everything was done, you know, face to face. And then a lot of them had to pivot, had to change, become unique in a different way completely to be able to survive. And those who, you know, didn't change their market, market dominating position, you know, kind of floundered and maybe even had to close up shop. So be willing to be flexible as well and let it change over time as well as refining over time. Right, and that, that goes back right to episode one of season two here is that you have to know where you're going. <clears throat> if you don't have that guiding light, then you don't know which road to go down. <clears throat> so we're just going to encourage you, you know, over and over again to make sure you know where you're going. <clears throat> and then that way getting there is so much easier. Uh, so you know, the other thing I want to want to touch on with this too, is that once you've kind of figured it out or once you're to the point where you're happy enough with it, then it, it needs to be part of all your marketing. You know, Maria touched on it with, uh, with the online or, in, you know, in print. <clears throat> <coughs> Pardon me. But it also has to do with even the way you answer the phone. If you're if you're touching on and solving their problem every time you answer the phone, then then the, your prospects will know right off the bat that they're talking to the right people or not. So you need to make sure, and it's not just yourself. Like if you're a business owner um, of a small business and you have two or three staff members, everybody that is there with you that are that is answering the phone or in communication with any kind of prospects or even existing clients they need to be aware of your market dominating position and they need to continue to um, voice that uh, market dominating position when they are talking to their customers or new prospects or even when they're just talking to people um uh, it's funny enough even at the you know the line at the local coffee shop you know, if someone asks you, you know, what are you doing, then um, then you let them know, and then boom, if it's if they're your target market uh, people, they will uh, respond to your market dominating position. Yeah, it's very very helpful, especially like if you're using it all the time, constantly answering the phone, having it right there in front of you on your website, on your social media platform. Um, when you go to networking events, whether in person or online, you're able to you know, pull out your position and let everyone know what you do. So having it, saying it every single day, kind of letting it become your mantra, as it were, um, will help solidify that idea and that purpose in your mind. Yep, 100%. So the homework for this week, Maria, is that uh, not not for you, of course, because we... Okay, okay, you know, yeah, I'm the well, only one in front of you. It's my homework. <laughs> Well, well, just yeah, for for all the listeners out there or the viewers of the video here that we're recording, um, th this is something that Maria and I did. You know, it took us uh, months to put things together, even including the name of the business, uh, the mission statement, and and the and how we were going to put together the packages. You know, we just didn't sit down and you know in one hour come up with everything. This was something that took time. So I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to challenge everyone. The homework for this week is to 
figure out, first of all, who is your ideal target market? And this also is, is the type of people that you enjoy working with that are the more profitable customers. You know, like, you know, if you've got low hanging fruit and it's easy to, uh, to, to hit a certain market, but the profit margin in that is, let's say 15%, then that's not really a viable market. You don't have the profitability in that uh, target market to sustain your business. Whereas there may be another target market that is at about a 33% uh, profit margin. Um, you don't have a lot of them at this moment, but they're the ones that you enjoy. Those are the ones that continue to come back and then that you enjoy working with. So if those are the people that you really wanna work with and the profit margin is there, then that's where you wanna start. Right. You want to look at, OK, so I can work with these people. What is the main problem that I'm solving and how can I pr uh, provide that solution that is unique and different than everybody else? You know, you know, if, if there's nothing else you take from our five percent podcast over last season, this season and you know, future seasons, it's what I just said right there. If you can do that. Not only will it be more enjoyable because you were working with more clients that you enjoy working with, they're more profitable. And then once you figure out the market dominating position, you're going to be able to convert those prospects time and time again, because you're solving the exact problem that they have with a unique solution that nobody else uh, offers. So the short version of the homework from David's long-winded explanation um, is figure out who your ideal client is and start strategizing a plan on your dom market dominating position in short. So uh, we hope you all have a great rest, rest of the day, rest of the week, rest of the month. Hopefully you don't wait a whole month to listen to the next episode. Um, but we will see you guys. You will hear from us again in the next episode. So thank you and have a great one. Bye.